so uh, in this meeting i am going to talk about mainly uh, what is the basically difference between the ip versus the soc verification so i hope you guys are familiar with uh, what is ip or what we call as soc in general so let me just uh, give you the basic uh, so how this chip design and manufacturing flow works so if you see I, I, or maybe if you i don't know if you have uh, know about this asic flow and uh, fpga flow so that is a different topic altogether so uh, we can have a session on this later on but like uh, uh, just a brief i am going to tell you like uh, when this chip design like if you consider any soc or any chip which is being used in either uh, you consider your phone your laptop or anywhere any electronic devices where any chip is being used so this is the entire flow of this uh, chip designing and manufacturing so uh, you can see the different stages of this like chip design and development life cycle so first thing which we do uh, like first thing when we are going to build any chip or build any uh, soc first thing is done is like a specification architecture micro architecture so what is this this is like a, a suppose you are going to uh, you need a mobile right so previously if you remember like we had this uh, uh, non smartphone so where we don't have this uh, uh, smartphone uh, all these kind of whatsapp google and everything right just we had a control of using simple uh, key uh, uh, key button keypad and then we used to Uh, basically uh, just used for call and sms but later based on the need so basically this architecture and this specification is defined by the need of the any user okay so suppose i am going to build a, a chip for mobile user then i know what all specifications are required for it so uh, i have categorized this requirements and then accordingly i create an architecture for it for like complete uh, so see i create a architecture for it that what all things i need what all features i need so based on the features and based on the uh, basically uh, definition of things which we need we create a rtl design so uh, you know this uh, about this software development right so, so suppose you need one uh, uh, someone is putting some i don't know what is this why people are annotating don't do, do these kind of annotations please on the screen when i'm explaining so uh, now when you need any hardware right so uh, basically we need a coding logic so suppose software is a different uh, feature altogether like suppose you need any app or anything which you will be doing in software rajat Yes, can you unmute yourself once for one second? Yes, just remove this person. He is from other coaching center actually, and he have joined our meeting for disturbing us only. Anyway, so uh, where I was, I was talking about this RTL design. Okay, so uh, in software, you know that uh, suppose you need any app or anything, right? So you basically do some coding to get this up, uh, get this feature. so uh, you as you many whatsapp facebook these are all nothing but software stack so basically software is developed any app is developed on top of it the different software code is there which is basically using this so it takes some say, input and give you some output kind of thing so but if you need any hardware so for that we need a hardware definition language to create basically to code the hardware so suppose you know this about uh, uh, everyone is using this usb right usb device so usb nothing but uh, hardware right so uh, on top of it is the hard usb controller and then usb device so for device these like again chips are there but for controller this is nothing but a logic so that logic is basically this a hardware logic actually hardware logic so that hardware logic how it works we do that as a rtl coding that's nothing but a rtl design so that rtl design is Uh, which comes under a vhdl or a verilog or uh, 
these are the mainly basically hardware languages verilog and vhdl what is this aditi and this uh, asic asic fpga flow or uh, F, asic flow or fpga flow then we can understand in detail about this so so after the physical design so basically uh, if everything is like timing analysis everything is done floor planning area everything is done then we uh, go for the tape out so this tape out is nothing but like uh, once your uh, chip is ready in terms of hardware we coded we uh, did the physical design and all then we give it to the fab lab to create this chip which we call as a tape out and then after this tape out is done then after 2 to 3 months this chip come back to the from the fab to the uh, company for validation so in this process so if you see from the specification architecture till tape out if you see uh, just above this we have a verification okay this entire section is verification so you can understand this uh, uh, use of this verification is like 80 to 90% of this chip tape out means like 80 to 90% of the bandwidth and uh, is for verification so as soon as we complete the verification means we can go for the tape out as quickly as possible based on the verification effort and the based on how uh, quickly we can verify it so this verification timeline de defines the from the specification architecture to the tape out activity and you can understand the uh, basically importance of verification so since it is consuming almost this much amount of time so this verification is needed because in software you can have patches okay you can have patch means like suppose if this uh, uh, a uh, thing doesn't work then you can get a patch and then uh, you will get a, another release version and then you can use this software as it is but in hardware there is no patch activity okay so if something because it's just a hardware you cannot do anything uh, on the hardware so if something doesn't work you need to just throw it out again the entire process will work from the rtl design to physical design to tape out so and there is no such issue in the chip there the role of verification comes so any issue cannot escape from the verification that is the role of the verification engineer in this uh, uh, asic world actually so verification role is very 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 important you cannot leave a single bug because finding the bug in the silicon and uh, root causing the issue and again refixing it takes a lot and lot of effort and cost wise it's huge means like you can assume simple one tape out activity for a company if this tape out doesn't work it can destroy the company so this is so much so much costly one tape out activity is so much costly and if you see there are another few items over here one is validation and there is testing manufacturing product test and then is volume shipment so to build a single chip it's a costly effort but i don't know if you guys have studied this uh, fabrication process in uh, vlsi basics so to build a single chip it's a costly but again if you have to just put it in bulk right to create a design like same chip if you have to just replicate it means create in volume that basically can be done uh, in uh, small cost but building a single chip itself is costly but volume shipment there is a different aspect altogether so once the silicon comes from the fab then a validation is done validation means exactly working on the silicon like suppose you build a memory uh, sorry a mobile uh, chip so whether that mobile chip whatever you uh, develop you integrate in a system means like you integrate in a board and then you check that whatever features you have tried to add it whether all those features are working or not that we call as a validation that is the, which we call in the industry as a post silicon activity post silicon means once you get the silicon these are post silicon activity 
and these things are pre silicon activities so as a verification engineer you will be basically working on a pre silicon activity which we call it as a functional verification or formal verification okay go to the next slide please okay so this is a typical soc example like uh, how a simple soc looks like so uh, go to the next slide first please we'll come back to this slide again yes now see the components of soc which we call as system on chip these are the components of soc so i guess everyone would have heard about this processors cpu so these are basically built by arm intel and some few uh, processors are built by synopsys also then we we get a gpu that is a graphics processor unit basically then we have memory because if you are trying to do something you need a memory means like if you trying to store some data or you want to process some data then if you want to process some data then you need to uh, basically store the data if you uh, 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 who is drawn this extra line okay so uh, basically this memory uh, if you assume your simple phone then everyone requires to go to the phone then uh, everyone is looking for that okay i need a 64 gb memory i need a 128 gb memory or i need a 256 gb memory so these memories are also essential for any soc then you have a usb controller i have given just example usb controller so this usb controller means suppose you want to some do some activity uh, of data basically then how you control it that you you have a usb port everyone in their phone have a usb port so that usb port which again controlled by the usb controller then we have ios so ios means if you just take a example of simple ios in your phone so like there are camera then there are audio it's like where you put your mic and all so there is a camera there is like different buttons like to control the sound and uh, these things so these are called as the ios then we have interconnect i'll talk about interconnect when we go to the previous slide then we have a power management circuit and security control like power management circuit means like suppose uh, this uh, system should consume like everyone uh, uh, if you compare simple any uh, cheap chinese phone or you take any standard phone then you know how much like uh, uh, power basically you know that how much get it heated up okay so uh, how much power it needs and how much power it dissipates so all these things are basically controlled by the power management circuit and then we have a security control so if you build any chip then you need to basically secure the chip so that no one can hack it so that's why like uh, this apple phones are very uh, or if you assume any apple phones so apple phones or iphone they have a very good security system inside their soc so that it's very difficult to hack any apple phone or something so this security system basically defined so that no one can hack your chip so this why uh, security control is needed go back to the previous slide please okay so uh, if you just correlate with the uh, components which i described there first i talked about the processors right so these are the processors like uh, these are the processors A, where we have defined the application processors a unit so means uh, uh, because without any processor your system can't work i hope everyone knows the use of processor everyone would have studied about the microprocessors and microcontrollers so the purpose of processors i am not going to explain then basically the need of processors i have i hope everyone knows that okay then uh, the second component was related to uh, gpu which is a graphical processors unit so again like when we are uh, taking some graphics input then we need a gpu so uh, different socs are built basically using different kind of processors based on the need of that processor so that's why uh, you cannot find a similar kind of processors on all the soc but they will have different kind of processors on based on the need of it so suppose here 
these are the arm processors so arm processors are basically it's a heavy processor so but this is not basically used for the mobile so for mobile you will have a simple small small processors developed by other arm or synopsis these processors are used in a soc suppose you are uh, going to use this chip in like your uh, aviation sector or automobile sector so in aviation sector means like you assume a rocket or any space ship or anything there you need a heavy processor so those uh, uh, based on your need you define the processor which kind of processors you need then i uh, i also talked about the usb controller so if you can find here usb and i also talked about the ios so basically these are the ios like you uh, you have this uh, spi can i2c and all those kind of things like for serial communication like if you have any sensor like how the sensor works so uh, uh, i hope everyone have studied about the instrumentation in instrumentation there is a attenuator then uh, uh, different kind of how this uh, sensor works that's it again different topic so how this sensor communicate to the system again that there is a different uh, kind of protocol we need for serial communication like spi i2c can uart these are the serial communication so basically using this you can have a communication from the external world using some device like uh, they will have device connected to it there will be a controller then you can communicate it so here they have seen as a mio mio is nothing but multiple input output pin so on this pin different uh, ios will be connected where people can have i i uh, like uh, i think everyone had done some experiment on the breadboard uh, in their btech time in the breadboard i if, if you have uh, i don't know uh, in your project i guess you would have done seven display seven unit display like one two three five or this kind of display you would have done on breadboard so on the breadboard you connect your led then you connect your connect the circuits design the circuit then you program it then uh, if you just give some inputs so those are you can assume this a uh, breadboard is a mio where you can have an interface of these ios then i talked about the interconnect so this interconnect is very much necessary to communicate between the ios to the processors and also to the memory so if you see the memory this is a on chip memory and this is a memory of ddr interface so Uh, if you see this interconnect is very much necessary for the communication between the uh, processors memories and ios so this interconnect basically on the uh, some uh, like industry standard interconnects are like uh, different defined by different companies uh, but again to have a communication through this interconnect we need some uh, standard bus protocol so those are like amba protocol in which it comes apb ahb axi so again based on the need so suppose this uh, these are small uh, io so there we will not have a axi port axi ports are basically used for uh, large data transfers so but this this is a simple data transfer so here we will have a apb or ahb then when we are talking with uh, communicating with usb then we will there we will have some axi so based on the need of your requirements you define your interface and through interface again this interconnect will convert this data from apb suppose this axi if there will be slow side interface this will be higher interface so again there will be converter from apb to axi converter or ahb to axi converter or suppose this side communicates with io so there will be axi and this side will be apb so this interconnect there will be different bridges which will connect to interconnect and do some communication with this then suppose you want any system to work then you need a reset and clock right so this clock generation is very much necessary so you will have a clock generation logic in your soc and again a reset generation logic in your soc and as i talked about the security system so uh, i guess everyone would have again studied on their uh, security uh, 3ds mechanism or aes or some decrypting mechanism where we decrypt the data and send it uh, to the chip or uh, send it anywhere so uh, this whatsapp also if you see then it uh, claims that there is a end to end decryption or encryption between two people so the people who is uh, uh, sending the message and people who is receiving the message this message is encrypted and decrypted between these two guys 
so third person cannot intervene and read this message so this is how it's controlled through aes and uh, different uh, security uh, measures and this power uh, as i also talked about the power control so this uh, this power control will suppose <clears throat> sometimes this this half or this half is not working then we can switch off the power to this half or we can switch off this power to this half so that there is a less dissipation of power so then you can see the less heating of your phones or any or any chip which you are using so these are the basically different components of soc i hope uh, uh, it's clear any doubts i'll wait for a couple of minutes in chat for any questions on this on this specific soc uh, thing usually i prefer very interactive session but uh, due to some unavoidable, unavoidable circumstances i cannot have it so if you have any question please uh, put it on chat regarding this topic what i discuss now please paste your question there put it in chat you can go to the next slide meanwhile nikhil so akshay is asking are adc and dsc important component in soc uh, what exactly adc and dsc component you mean akshay can uh, can you unmute and akshay please thank you analog to digital i believe okay analog to digital and digital to analog so again i said uh, it depends on the use case basically so uh, uh, it depends on the use case to use case so suppose if you are using some analog components where you are communicating with some digital world then you need definitely adc right or vice versa so it, it it's you cannot generalize it as such but again based on the use and need you will have this kind of thing yes okay i'll go ahead now so okay now as i have explained the uh, uh, typical soc how this soc looks and what all the components of the soc i will talk about the ip in uh, uh, detail basically or uh, uh, so basically uh, if, if you have seen the different components of this soc if you just take simple component just a second yeah so so actually uh, i have put uh, some questions over here so that like if i could have interactive sessions then i could have asked you guys but let me just ask this question and answer it myself so this ip what we call is a difference between ip and soc so ip full form is like a intellectual property so uh, property whatever you call so so any uh, can you go to the uh, previous slide where we had that diagram sir what sir uh, slide where we had i defined the soc diagram go to that slide yes here wait so uh, as a, that question consists like actually for this slide and this slide actually i will be switching on nikhil so 
so just pardon me so and i asked there what is ip so if you see the different components of this soc right you assume this spi i2c can do what gpi sdio gi this is nothing but gigabit ethernet usb all these are ips okay and uh, if you just look into this side swdc is nothing but was the timer again this is uh, again related to some timer control this again clock generation block this reset generation block this if you assume this simple interconnect or this you assume simple gic or ocm or ddr if you just take one block of it it will be a uh, called as a ip okay so means like uh, suppose you assume like uh, uh, if i give you example of alu i hope everyone understand this alu right the purpose of alu alu it's like if you want to build in a hardware that will be like a nothing but a ip so uh, again the uh, when you define any ip go to that slide please yes so i explained you what all we call as ip means examples you can again correlate with that uh, soc uh, diagram so now the next question i ask is how it is designed so uh, if you remember my first slide there i told about that architecture specification and then rtl design is done yes here so this is the specification architecture and then rtl design go to that slide again so if you want to build any feature like if you i just if i uh, give an example just you go ahead and build a alu and uh, in verilog and put it on fpga so that will be nothing but a ip so you can uh, do some verilog coding so first how this ip is designed means like uh, you uh, i gave you an example of alu to build right? then you will ask me okay you have given me alu what will be the features of this alu okay first you will note down the features of this alu okay so now i will give you okay now you just add the feature of adder subtractor multiplier then you do some uh, uh, boolean operations like and or xor nor these kind of operation you perform okay now you have specified this okay these these features i know or these these features i need to build okay now you will ask me okay these are the features so according to this features what kind of inputs i need okay like suppose uh, I, i ask you okay not i need a four four bit multiplier or four bit adder okay then you will need four bit of kind of input right or you will uh, suppose i say okay give me three variable adder or four variable adder so accordingly to according to my feature and according to the specification of that feature you will require the input output port okay suppose uh, in, in the adder suppose if i would have given you okay give me simple half adder or give me full adder then based on the half adder and full adder your input output port will change right so based on that you will define the input output ports of your ip which we call as a io ports so as a input port and output port and again there will be input like clock reset and suppose uh, uh i i hope uh, everyone knows about this interrupt mechanism okay so then uh, there could be an input of interrupt why we need an interrupt is like suppose uh, you are building any uh, 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 you take an example of this atm machine okay then this atm machine suppose you are uh, there as soon as you enter your card you put some uh, input like uh, okay they will ask for inputs like give me your pin then you enter your pin then ask for cash withdrawal balance inquiry or those kind of things suppose you are entering your balance uh, or entering your pin and then enter your amount and then suppose you want to decle um, like uh, remove it then there is like back option or there is a cancel button so this cancel button if you press then your every process whatever you are doing it will stop it so it's like an interrupt to it like you have given an input where it will overpass like i i guess uh, you have heard about this maskable interrupt and non maskable interrupt in your uh, microsystem or microcontroller 
or microprocessor as such. So that uh, subject, if you study, there is a concept of mass scale interrupt and non mass scale interrupt. So this, uh, uh, if you assume any mass scale interrupt, like uh, there is a uh, interrupt called trap, or there was an interrupt called uh, ITR zero, ITR one, ITR two, like that. So this. A trap is like a non muscle interrupt. As soon as the trap interrupt comes, it will basically stop everything and it will service that in, uh, interrupt. So, service this interrupt means you are getting a high priority inputs and then you need to serve it and then you need to stop other processes. So, all these definitions are defined by the system requirement. So, you first create the system requirement. You know the system requirement, you note it down, you define the different features of the system, and then accordingly you proceed. So this, whatever I spoke till now, it was related to architecture and micro architecture. So, uh, so basically first you define the architecture, means like what are these features, and ins inside the features you define that, okay, I need a full adder, I need a four bit adder, I need a four bit multiplier, I need a two bit XOR, I need a four bit XOR, so this is like nothing but a micro architecture. So you in detail of that uh, architecture, you define everything in the micro architecture spec. So you define the spec. After this is done, this input is given to a RTL designer. Okay. So this RTL designer take this specification and accordingly he do the coding in the Verilog or VHDL based on the uh, uh, company's standard or anything. So this is how a simple IP is designed. This is two process. What is IP? You define it and then how it is designed. This is the flow of IP design. Okay. Now, uh, if you again, uh, remember my first slide there, I have explained you why we need verification. Okay. Because uh, in hardware, there cannot be any patch. So if some feature doesn't work, you need to throw that chip out. So verification is very much necessary for any uh, IP design, okay? So verification engineer will be the uh, core or like he will be like in focus if some issue comes in the later stage. So that's why this verification cycle is uh, a lot in a chip design and development cycle, okay? Cool. That's like this. okay. And the next question is how it is done. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as I explained, uh, different uh, features. So in the feature, uh, basically how everything is verified. So verification is done in three ways. So one is like uh, functional verification at IP level. Then there is a concept of formal verification. And then again, at system level verification is done. So this functional verification and formal verification based on your IP or based on your requirement, you choose between that, okay, this I need a functional verification or this I need a formal verification. So again, if I go in the detail, that's again, it will become a different topic. What is different between the functional verification and formal verification? So just in a nutshell, you can understand formal verification, it's like an assertion like okay if i give a input like if a equal to 2 then b should be equal to 2 we write an assertion for it and then we keep giving some out inputs and then this assertion will verify my design but in functional verification you pick one feature you develop that test case for it that okay i am going to give different kind of a stimulus and after different kind of a stimulus i am going to uh, uh, expect these kind of mid time of outputs or mid term outputs and at the end functional final output. So this is like a functional verification. So if I just ask you to simple, uh, then uh, to do some verification or functional verification, we need a different kind of test bench for it. So if you know about Verilog, so a uh, nickel or uh, uh, Rajat, uh, these guys have an idea like, uh, uh, have they studied this very long or system very long so far? Yes, sir. I think they have. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you have studied this very long, then you know uh, about uh, a linear test bench. So, in very long, you can have a simple linear test bench. 
why we call it a linear test bench is this whatever the test bench you are going to use or whatever components you are going to use it cannot be reused for a different uh, feature so that's why we call it a linear test bench so uh, then verification why we don't uh, do with only very low even though rtl coding we are doing only in very low but verification we don't do in very low because uh, i hope everyone knows about this oops concept so object oriented programming so this object oriented programming makes this linear test bench into a modular test bench there you define your uh, different things in some sub modules and then you can use those modules to verify it or they can you can reusability so reusability is more inside the system very low then i guess everyone uh, knows about this ubm so ubm is nothing but a universal verification methodology remember it ubm is not a language language which you use in ubm is system very low okay universe ubm is not a it's a methodology where you have defined a different structure complete structure where you will uh, have a standard test bench in that test bench there is a, again modularity and reusability is huge like in system very log you need to build everything like monitor then agent then driver and then different kind of components you need to use on your own there is a, uh, but in ubm they have built some libraries where you can use those libraries and then you can build your test bench which will be a, very much modular and very much reusable and it will give you uh, like uh, option of uh, very much randomization so it's like we call it a constrained random verification so using ubm you can have that kind of verification and that's like a stressed verification so again as i said uh, advantage of SU, sv ubm over verilog is verilog is a linear thing there we cannot reusability uh, reuse it but in system where log and ubm you can reuse it but if we if i just explain ubm in nutshell then you will have a structure some defined a structure and def defined library using which you can build your test bench which will be very uh, uh, helpful in generating a stimulus or generating a test case or generating a scenario where you can uh, uh, verify your design in proper way and you will be able to find bugs easily using ubm okay uh, next question is how do we sign off ip and soc for tape out okay so if you again remember my first slide so if you see the verification timeline as soon as the verification ends you see the ta tape out activity go to the first slide please first slide please first slide here so if you see this as soon as this verification end this tape out is done okay so this verification defines when you're going to do the tape out okay go to that slide please next oh sorry sorry here 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 on uh, okay so uh, uh, the question which i have asked is how do we sign off sign off means uh in general in general term if you see a guy sign off means he is done with that activity and he is signing off means it's done for him it's good to go same thing for ip means tape out is necessary that ip guy and soc guy need to sign off this ip or soc signing of ip means every feature whatever is defined in the spec is properly verified with uh, different randomization all kind of randomization there should not be any corner cache all the code all the code which they have written every code is uh, uh, verified every line is verified every feature is verified with different kind of input suppose if i have given four four bit input then four bit input means all the means maximum possible input combination can be 16 all the 16 combinations has been verified or not 
so there we call it as a sign of ip means you do a coverage analysis of the ip means you do code coverage then again you define a functional coverage if you, when we study this uh, system we log in detail we'll understand about this coverage but this coverage means code coverage and functional coverage is mandatory 100% for sign off of the ip for every feature then we if everything is done then we sign off the ip from the ip test bench perspective so this ip test bench means as i said this should be verified in proper random environment with different kinds of input and stressed means like uh, we we uh, we give a different kind of a stressed in input like suppose we have seven bit input or seven inputs then all the seven inputs or combinations of seven inputs should be randomized in such a way that it create a stressed scenario and the data should proceed with the ip and it should get a proper defined output out uh, out of it that way we define a ip verification and then soc soc we don't basically do that stress kind of testing okay so suppose uh, go to that uh, second slide where i have defined this soc here yes so if you assume this uh, simple spi okay so this spi if you just consider a ip means your verification is just restricted to this input and output boundary of soc your input is nowhere concerned that from here where that output is going it's not that if your input and output is verified properly then your ip is done so similarly as i said when a soc is done every ip is given to a different owners and they they, they verify their block their input and their output done their ip is done now at soc level how this ip and soc is uh, different is now this input should travel from here and then it should go till the processors or any input which is coming from the processor it need to go and reach this spi so this basically from the connectivity point of view soc is needed you need not verify each and every feature of this spi at I, uh, soc level because at ip level this all the feature has been verified what you are going to verify at soc level is whatever the ports at input and output ports you just give input and there should be toggle on the output port and input port so at soc level in uh, uh, code coverage we have line coverage fsm coverage conditional coverage and toggle coverage this we have at a uh, code coverage but when you do soc verification you basically only concerned about the toggle coverage because you need not verify all the features so for that you don't care about it just do some give some input from the processor it is reaching the spi and uh, the purpose is done it is generating the interrupt so interrupt will be serviced from here at ip level you service the inter uh, interrupt using some agent but at soc level this processor has to service it so this complete flow is tested at the soc level and there a stress test is not done rather than doing the stress test a basic connectivity check is done and whatever the uh, feature wise the simple feature is tested at the soc level so this is the main difference between the ip and soc is all the feature in detail will be verified at the ip level but at soc level there will be connectivity sanity check and some interrupt mechanism check is there so that path is entire path is clean everywhere the connectivity is there and whatever the simple uh, feature if it is working then uh, this is good to go at soc level so at soc level i'll take this question later so uh, as i said means a different criteria for signing of the ip and soc for the tape -off. okay okay next comes what is simulation what is emulation and what is validation okay so in my slides you have seen the functional verification and then at the end as i said validation 
if you see the first slide then i said validation is done so this simulation and emulation are pre silicon activity okay but this validation is done as a post silicon activity means silicon comes after the fab then we validate it okay this simulation and emulations are done before we send this uh, soc to the fab or I, uh, or uh, system to the fab so this simulation which we are talking about it's a functional verification when we are doing some ip functional verification or soc verification we define our test batch in system verilog upm I, uh, or simple verilog or uh, at so uh, at ip level we norm, usually in uh, uh, industry standard we define our test batch in upm so our environment where we'll be uh, doing some simulation is like when we checking the inputs and outputs when we are defining or checking the verification doing the verification if which we call it's a simulation so it this rtl basically you load it on a tool like uh, we have a different uh, simulators can you go to the next slide please okay so these simulators are de defined by different uh, companies uh, uh, here i have listed few one is verdi dv vcs so these are from synopsis okay then we have nccm from kaden we have questa from mentor and then we have vivardo from xilinx so i guess if uh, in your college you would have used mostly vivardo because there is a, a student version and uh, a uh, pre license you, you get in vivardo and questa i don't think uh, in college people use bcs db or verdi usually they use the questa or vivardo so this simulator like if you have written some verilog design you write it in a verilog code and then you define the test bench out of it and then you use it this tool to verify it or to do some uh, input output check so that check means like you uh, give some input get some output you do some waveform analysis or you do some log check analysis that is done using the simulators so that verification means functional verification are done through the simulators okay this is about the ip test bench now you build a soc test bench so this soc test bench usually it's done in a c c language because the processors when this processor is used then this processors the processor if you have uh, seen this microprocessors or microcontrollers you must know this assembly language right so this processors are basically they need this uh, uh, in terms of assembly language so converting the c to assembly is very easy so that's why you use c uh, for your system level verification so you give a stimulus in c through processors which will be basically dumped into the uh, converted into as uh, assembly language and then it generate this input and uh, provide this uh, stimulus to the different ips and then you check it so that is again nothing but it's done using the simulator so soc ip verification and system verification this is done in the simulator using vcs ncs in question we were okay next comes the emulators so this uh, verification it's like suppose uh, 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 it's a very complex design. Like suppose this SOC, the example which I have given there, it's a very complex design, very and huge complex design because too many IOs are involved, too many processors are involved, too many memories and too many interconnects are involved. So, at to verify at SOC level with different kind of constraint randomization and all, it takes lot and lot of time to uh, basically verify it. So to Uh, accelerate the process to accelerate the verification or accelerate the pre silicon verification so like uh, i'll give you example simple example at system level at system level with that soc if you try to do some test case uh, verification or like if the test case run for like suppose simple 1 millisecond that 1 millisecond itself takes 6 hours to 7 hours or sometimes even 24 hours or 36 hours to complete single a single test So you can assume how much complex it is, and uh, the input which, like this test case, is running for so huge, right? So it means like you uh, you have uh, running the test case. It takes 48 hours to give you some output effect. 
you can assume how much cumbersome it is and how time taking it is so to basically accelerate such kind of process or such kind of verification we use emulators there it mimics the design means like you will have a hardware and that hardware basically mimics the design and then you will have again uh, uh, c test bench or c plus uvm test bench then that using that combination you will be providing the input that emulator we have defined by different companies one is jibu which is from synopsis and then there is a palladium this is from cadence so these are to enhance the pre silicon verification activity uh, in the industry then we have a fpga okay so uh, whatever the code whatever the rtl code uh, a user is basically developing that must be synthesizable okay because why we call it synthesizable is means in hardware everything should be in terms of gates or something like some uh, combinational logic or some sequential logic right means like it should be a digital thing right it should be com combo plus sequential logic that combo plus sequential logic means like when you are writing some code it should that code should be converted means like it should be convertible in terms of combo plus sequential logic okay that we call as a rtl it's like uh, we define a hardware descriptor language and it must be synthesizable then only uh, there is a purpose of developing like synthesizable means it is nothing but a hardware that hardware it is converting into some flops it is converting into some combo logic it is converting some gates so that's why we need is a hardware descriptor language which basically when we synthesize it using that uh, defined tool it will basically convert into that gate and that output that bit file means like normally we call it a bit file that bit file is dumped into the fpga and fpga means like again we have a test case for it and then we validate it means after this uh, coding is done and synthesize is done we validate it which we call as a validation see why we need a why we cannot wait for the silicon to come here i i i hope everyone knows about this fpga fpga means like it's a field programmable gate array where you define a logic and you put it in terms of bit file so that this fpga when you put this bit file it will replicate like a at it will uh, like a silicon which you get out of your fab you cannot wait for this entire process the silicon to come to check whether this uh, synthesizable logic is working or not so to do that normally this fpga process or fpga flow process works in parallel so this rtl coding is done ip guys are verifying some feature and that feature is giving uh, being released to the soc guys so there we they convert into fpga bit file they dump it on fpga and again they keep testing that feature on fpga so that this activity goes in parallel and as soon as the functional verification complete this soc verification also flows in the same time so that this can go for the tape off that's why this fpga is more relatable to the once this silicon comes from the fab and this uh, this how this system will work on a silicon it will be replicating this fpga which we uh, developed in the design okay go to the next slide please so this is basically the difference between the simulation emulation and validation okay so uh, i have just listed out uh, for your reference whatever i have explained in terms of some few words here so what is ip verification means we prefer random test cases for the module and sub system level verification why we need random test cases is like we have a different kind of input where suppose any uh, random input can come so that random uh, to have some such randomness we develop a random test cases for the ip level so at the module module or sub system level means like you can assume as ip level we could randomize the scenario as much as possible which we call as a regression testing and make the ip stable finding more bugs and achieving the coverage closure as the complexity of ip functionality is less than the soc because if you just see simple ip as i have given example of spi this is restricted to input and output but after that there are again few components so the complexity of ip is less than a complete soc that's why we choose as one component we verify it again we connect it and then again we test it at the soc level go to the next slide please okay next is the soc verification we prefer directed test cases for the soc level verification 
because as i have told you we need a, some connectivity kind of for small testing where the connectivity is clean because already we have tested regressively for that ip so as the complex soc uses such pre verified stable ips soc verification in engineers generally prefer directed test cases to verify how the entire system works when with the software running on the processor then the exhaustive regression simulation with the random sv ulm test case i hope i have explained why we need it so far okay so if you see again if you read this statement if the soc uses an arm processor i have told you based on the requirement different kind of processors will be used either arm processor or again uh, defined by some uh, synopsis of one processor so usually we replace the arm rtl by its functional model called dsm that is nothing but design simulation model Uh, that can use the firmware, which is again, as I said, this SOC verification is done in the C, written in C as a stimulus to initiate any operation and drive all the other peripherals, which means other peripherals means those IOs we had, memories we had, and all those components. Now SOC verification folks write C test case to generate various directed scenarios through firmware and verify the SOC functionality. Okay. next point is during the simulation the complete c source code is compiled as an object code which will be loaded into on chip ram if you see there is a ocm which we call it as on chip ram the arm processor reads the object files from the memory and initiates the operation by configuring and driving all the rtl peripheral blocks based on the c inputs it will initiate either to the spi either to the i2c either to the usb either to the ethernet either to the some other thing based on the coding which we have done the arm processor will initiate the coding next slide please okay now uh, usually this soc means like uh, a simple c verification does the purpose but in some case but in some case or some scenario we need some regressive testing at soc level also so to do that we have soc at soc we have soc ubm verification usually ubm is at done at ip level and at c verification at the system level so in soc level also we have c plus ubm environment where so why we need it is because to do some exhaustive verification and improve the bug finding rate at the soc level okay so the arm processor model can also be created means like this processor we had right apu we had so this arm processor model can also be created as an ahb or axi agent or bfm means like this this uh, arm processor means where it is as i said it uh, uh, means like if you uh, go to the previous slide there it takes the c code and con convert into some uh, input right so similarly those things can be done like yes here as i said it takes the uh, load in the chip ram and the arm processor read the object code from the memory and initiates operation so these things we can replicate go to next slide please so to mimic the processor we define some agents so if you read uvm you will understand what is the purpose of agent so it basically or bfm it's a bus functional model so basically it initiates some transaction it initiates some inputs it initiates some kind of transactions to the system so that we can exactly replicate the purpose of uh, uh, apu that can generate various random sequences in terms of arm core instruction okay so we can define various random scenario in ubm to model a firmware operation sequence which can eventually drive the existing lower level ip or ubm sequence so again based on the need and requirement we did do such kind of verification so this way we can scale up the ip level random test cases to the soc level whatever the random test cases which we have developed at ip level that again we have to do and again we can scale up and do the exhaustive regression testing at the soc level too but again it is based on the user to uh, based on the soc complexity and based on the need we give, we select or we know or we come to know whether it is needed or not then Uh, uh uh but uh, uh, then we again we have soc plus ubm environment but there will be still many challenges of the achieving coverage closure due to the redundant test cases and slow simulation speed as i said 
at SOC level, if you want to do some verification, simply running one millisecond or two millisecond, it takes around 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours. So based on the, because the test cases is again done at the IP level. So again, if you, again, if you do at the SOC level, the test case, which is supposed to run at IP level at five minutes, at again, the same test case at the SOC level, it might run up one and a half hours or two hours. So based on the need and requirement, we choose it or we define it. And again, we have to do it. Okay, go to the next slide, please. Okay, maybe that was the end of the slide. So that's how uh, basically this, this sums up the entire IP plus SOC verification. Okay, let me go to the question. Someone asked. Uh, I have not studied system verilog and thus UVM. So while checking coverage results of my verilog RTL, I had spent a lot of time to make sure I toggle all possibilities and combination. That system will log and you can help us solve this problem. Yes, definitely. Definitely. It will help you create a proper linear uh, modular test bench, reusable test bench, and randomization is much better in the uh, system will log in video. Yes, you can open uh, for question and answer. Uh, that's all from my side. I didn't get your uh, point, Manu, actually. Maybe, Manu, can you mute and ask uh, your question? Uh, sir, uh, actually, in your project, all tests, for example, all 100 test cases are passed. Then again, I need to put uh, regression testing for those successful test cases. Yes, because see, your successful test cases means it doesn't mean that it will uh, cover your different kind of a stimulus in one test itself. Right? So when you uh, define your test case or when you define your test bench, you make sure that every time it give, get different kind of stimulus, it get different kind of input so that those inputs are given to the system and then it verifies it. So you need not that in one test case, if you have written a directed test case, then you need not put it in uh, regression. But if it is a random test case where every time it's creating different stimulus, it's different kind of inputs, then definitely you need to put it in regression. And that is the main purpose of system log in UVM. You don't need to have a directed test case. You need to have a random test case where every time it will give different, different kind of inputs. Uh, sir, actually, apart from uh, code coverage and functional coverage in coverage, any coverages are there or only two coverages? So uh, in terms of coverage, we have functional coverage and code coverage on this. So in code coverage, again, as I said, there are different things like line coverage, conditional coverage, FSM coverage, toggle coverage. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. If it is no, anyone doesn't have any doubt. Sir, AMBA protocol, AMBA, AXI, AHB, APB, those protocols are SOC or IP, I think IP level, sir. That is this correct. is nothing to do with SOC or IP, uh, I guess, Bhanu, right? Uh, Bhanu, yeah. So uh, this is nothing to do with IP or SOC. This is a bus protocol, okay? So wherever you are doing that verification, right? either uh, you are doing it uh, SOC level or IP level, that bus protocol will be used everywhere. So, uh, as I do, I, we can do IP level or SOC level in both AMBA protocols. We will do, sir. We can do. Yeah, that's what I said, right? That's what I said, right? Okay. Uh, this okay. SPI, if you take this interface, they, they have this uh, input interface and output interface. So, uh, uh, for uh, data communication, right, which we have to connect with, uh, con uh, communicate with this uh, interconnects and different processors. So this communication will happen through a specific channel and that channel communication is nothing but a bus protocol. So the different protocol is defined for it. So that protocol, it doesn't has to relate with IP or SOC. It's a general. So whether you're doing IP verification or SOC verification, that communication, data communication will happen through that protocol only. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Any more questions? Uh, sir, in a recent interview with uh, uh, AMD, uh, that uh, interviewer asked uh, in coverage, uh, code coverage, functional coverage, 
he asked apart from uh, one question that is uh, a conditional coverage i told that i didn't know sir that's what i told right in in code coverage there are different things line coverage fsm coverage conditional coverage and toggle coverage okay 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 sir okay uh, this, this is again types of, of these are the parts code. of code coverage okay okay yes. main two Did types just... sir code coverage and functional coverage in coverage yes yes so suppose uh, i'll give you the, i'll explain you this how this code coverage works in suppose you have written a simple fsm okay so in yes. fsm suppose you have a different case statement so if this case a and if some input comes then you go to the case b or if input comes again you go to the case c similar those kind of things okay then whether your inputs you, your inputs came in such a way that these kind of possible fsm toggle happened or not like from a to b did it go or b to a did it go or a to c did it go based on the inputs so these are nothing but fsm coverage okay now suppose you have written a statement a equal to equal to 2 or a equal to equal to b plus 1 okay you have written this condition then it will come whether b equal to 0 happened or not whether b happened from uh, b happened one or not or suppose b is at four bit value then 0 0 0 came or not 0 1 0 0 came or not so these kind of different inputs or different conditions like b equal to equal to one then in that condition whether these kind of inputs came or not these are conditional coverage okay then comes the line coverage means like all this statement you have written like line a like a plus equal to 2 then b equal to 3 c equal to 5 d equal to 10 all this line happened or not so like when you gave input whether these lines covered or not so these are line coverage then comes about the toggle coverage so suppose uh for two bit value then from whether your input from 0 to 1 happened or not and then again after some time 1 to 0 happened or not so these are nothing but toggle coverage so all these combinations can make your code coverage this is called as a code coverage okay 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 sir thank you sir i understood sir now industry level scripting language is uh, python is better or uh, perl is better sir it depends It's on the requirement actually it depends on the requirement and uh, actually mostly uh, people are using python because that's i have uh, too much of uh, uh, library available too much of reusability it's like it's very well defined very well organized actually python but uh, for simple scripting language doing some automation kind of thing perl will run in place but if you have to build some proper automation then too much of things like proper system uh, basically this uh, this cad environment so suppose this simulator as i gave example like so i um, mean so you have written rtl code i have written my test bench when i give some stimulus whether that proper and uh, we give some output so to pass the output it's like whether the test case is passed or not and to build that i'm um, like to get the coverage uh, that what all things are done so basically we will build a cad environment of it of the test bench so that environment is basically again built using python or perl so so basically uh, that's what it defines like how complex it is and how uh, fast a person can achieve using these two languages so accordingly they choose for the python uh, sir in a position like uh, formal verification is different like a verification role is different both are same formal verification uh, verification design verification so i uh, if you uh, recollect my first slide where i was explaining you different kind of verification i told you about the functional verification and then formal verification so these are two different domains actually so so i don't uh, in detail how this formal verification is done i will not go in much into that basically we have different tools using that tool we define some constraint we define some uh, logic using that uh, uh, assertion is developed using that this formal verification is done this is not shall i can give functional verification you need to do everything on your own like uh, your tool will only just run it it will not gen going to generate some stimulus for you in formal verification tool is going to generate stimulus for you you need to give or uh, put some constraint in such a way that assertions are being developed 
so that is a like a fun, formal verification but functional verification you need to give some input you need to define the logic how your stimulus is going to go to this go to that go to this section so this is done using a functional verification so again as i said based on the need of the verification a functional verification formal verification or combination of both are used to verify the ip or ss sir as a verification engineer it is necessary to learn linux commands sir it is useful or not linux commands yes definitely definitely you need to learn this linux commands yes thank you sir thank you so much for clearing all our doubts sir once again thank you so much thank you so much sir excuse me
I don't really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through Got issues in my head I like you in my bed But you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead And I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something out of my Dead. Will you regret everything that you did, that you said I don't think you understand what you're doing And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free